Hey everyone, Till here. Welcome to the artist review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite 2022. This video is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written. The link is in the video description below. Or you can use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from Samsung Singapore. In this video, I'm just going to present to you my findings so that you can decide whether or not this is worth the money. Listed by the side of the screen are the specifications for this review unit. The main upgrade here from the previous model is the upgrade in the processor from Exynos 9611 to Snapdragon 720G and this particular review unit actually comes with Snapdragon 732G which has very similar performance compared to the Snapdragon 720G and both Snapdragon processors are about 40% faster compared to the previous processor so it's quite a substantial upgrade with this refresh model. Let me give you the bottom line up front. This is a beautiful tablet that looks and feels premium. The display is 10.4 inches and the colors look good out of the box. Overall performance is quite smooth, although if you have many apps open, the apps may refresh like what you see here, but the refresh is quite fast. Drawing performance is fantastic with the Samsung S Pen which is included and when it comes to loading web pages it's equally fast as well here um, it did not refresh because I was just using this earlier and scrolling through uh, navigation finger gestures all those work very fast and very fluidly this review unit has 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage but storage can be upgraded very easily because there is a micro SD card slot the main limitation with this tablet is if you have too many apps open, you may start to feel the system lagging. For example, these four thumbnails were white earlier and they had to be redrawn. And if you open apps that were not open for a while, the app will refresh, but that's pretty much it. Right now I have 14 apps open and it's still quite fluid. so. I can't tell you the exact number of apps that's required to make the system lag. All I can say is the overall performance is smoother compared to the previous generation. This tablet can be used for some gaming, although it may struggle with graphics intensive games such as Genshin Impact. It's not the smoothest, but it's smooth enough. This is definitely very playable. Battery life is about 10, 11, 12 hours or more. So you can definitely get at least two days of use with this tablet when you fully charge it. There is one issue with this review unit though. There's some issue with light bleeding or glow at the bottom edge here where the USB port is. So this could be some quality control issue. The bottom line is, this is a good tablet. This is obviously not as powerful compared to the more expensive Samsung Galaxy tablets such as the Tab S7 or the S8. You do get what you pay for applies here. So my main issue is just with the light bleed at the edge here which doesn't look good. And now on to the full review. Let's take a look at the items included in the box. Now the most important thing you need to know before you buy the tablet is to make sure you get the correct model. Make sure you get the 2022 model and not the 2020 model because on the packaging there is no information telling you that this is the 2022 model. So make sure that you check the product page, make sure you check the specifications, make sure you get the model with Snapdragon 720G or 732G. So these are the items included. This is a rather short USB-A to USB-C charging cable. This power adapter is only 8 watts, so it's kind of slow. That's the SIM ejection tool and there's a quick start guide inside. This is a 3.5mm earphone and headset. And this is the included Samsung S Pen. Design of the Tab S6 Lite 2022 looks identical to the previous model that came out in 2019. So this is still a good looking design. It looks and feels very premium. We have thin bezels 
on all four sides and they are uniform we have rounded corners a very reflective display with no anti reflective coating the front camera is just 5 megapixels there is face unlock which works fine but it's not the fastest this is one of the thinner tablets out there in the market today this is the power button, the volume buttons, this is the micro SD card slot this is the Wi-Fi model, there is the LTE model which is also available so on this side we have the speaker grills there's only one speaker on this side audio quality is good, audio is loud and clear this is a 3.5mm audio jack and there is another set of speaker grill on the bottom side this is USB-C with USB 2 speed so the speed is slow which means this tablet will not be able to output video signal so when you're holding the tablet this way thankfully the speakers are on top so your hands will not block the speaker grills which is nice on the back is just one 8 megapixel camera and this is the back it's all metal and it has a nice matte textured surface to it all the edges here are beveled smooth the sides are kind of flat and yeah so overall build quality is fantastic face unlock works fast enough resolution is 2000 by 1200 and on a 10.4 inch display there is no pixelation that's noticeable so all the visuals look quite sharp this LCD display is said to support 60 million colors and the colors look good out of the box but at a glance I can tell the color support isn't as good compared to the more expensive Samsung Galaxy tablets the LCD has four rounded corners as well just like the exterior the only issue I have with this LCD is just the glow at the edge which you can see here but there is no glow at the other edges and for some reason the glow here looks more obvious when the background is light versus dark general performance of this tablet is good given the specifications apps can load quite quickly web pages can load quite quickly so this is a fantastic tablet for media consumption for surfing the web watching videos checking emails the audio quality is pretty good as well the audio is loud and clear finger gestures work very smoothly multitasking on this tablet works great the only time where you may notice some lag is when you have too many apps open like many many apps open but even so if you want your tablet to become smooth again you can just close the apps very quickly with the close all button another area where you may see and feel some lag is when you are playing graphics intensive games but even so gaming is still quite smooth oops Anyway, I don't consider this to be a gaming tablet but yes, you can play games on this tablet if you want to This is the included Samsung S Pen that supports tilt and slightly over 4000 levels of pressure sensitivity It's quite comfortable to hold, it's not as big or thick compared to other stylus that I've tested but it's comfortable enough at least it's much thicker compared to the S Pens that I included with the Samsung phones there's only one side button here which can be customized depending on the app that you use when you have the pen near the display there will be a little pen icon here when you tap on the pen icon or when you click the side button it will call up these shortcuts for you to create notes uh, record messages, doodle, translate or draw that feature is called Air Command and since I'm quite prone to clicking on this side button accidentally I will turn it off this display is laminated so there is no gap between the glass and the LCD beneath so when you're writing or drawing it's going to look like the line is appearing directly beneath the pen tip so here you can see the line trying to catch up with the pen tip because there is some latency the refresh rate of this display is 60 hertz so the latency gap that you see on this tablet is going to be larger compared to the gap that you see on tablets with 120 hertz refresh rate 
And the app you use will also affect latency. So this app is Midibank Paint Pro, which doesn't have very good latency response. This is Infinite Painter, which has some latency as well. Let's do some line tests. So this is how thick the brush really is. And this is how thin the line can be when you apply minimal pressure. Initial activation force is low, but it's not as low compared to pen tablets from Wacom, Huion, or XP Pen. I would say the Apple Pencil has slightly lower initial activation force compared to the Samsung S Pen. And you do have to um, apply some pressure to get a line. If you rely on the weight of the pen itself to draw, you won't get any line, even though the pen tip is in contact with the drawing surface. And this is how the lines taper. The lines taper quite nicely, as in the taper is sharp and smooth. And now let me draw lines with consistent width by applying consistent pressure. So I can do so easily. Let's create some dots. And this will react with pressure sensitivity as well. This is cross hatching. And this is tilt sensitivity. How smooth the transition from thin to thick will depend on the app you use. And for this app, which is Concepts, the transition isn't that smooth. And this is to be expected with this particular app. The thing with this pen design is if you tilt the pen at a very low angle, the plastic part here may be in contact with the surface. So if you tilt the pen at too low an angle, you may produce broken lines like this when the pen tip is not in contact with the drawing surface. All right, let's draw something while I talk more about the drawing experience. So this app is Medibank Paint Pro. And on a 10.4 inch tablet, the user interface takes up this much space on the side and at the top. If you have the palette on the side here, you still get a good amount of space to work with. Now this tablet aspect ratio is 16 by 10, which means it works better when you use it in landscape mode like this. If you use this app in vertical orientation, you can see it feels kind of narrow. And when you have the palettes on the side, this is very vertical, almost too vertical. Apps that have minimal user interface elements will work better with portrait orientation. And this tablet is quite lightweight. It's 465 grams for the Wi-Fi model. So this is a tablet you can hold very easily with one hand and draw on it. Even when you have a case on the tablet, it's still quite manageable in terms of the weight. Let's draw something really quickly. I'm going to create a few layers here. I'm not sure how many layers you can create with 4 gigs of RAM because I've not tested the limits yet. By the way, there is perfect palm rejection, which is to say that if I draw with my finger or place my palm on the display, I will not be able to introduce any stray strokes. The drawing process is quite smooth. I don't really have uh, any issues with the drawing process or the workflow. There is latency, but I don't think it's like a big deal when it comes to drawing as in it doesn't affect accuracy. I personally prefer to work on larger tablets, but larger tablets are going to be more expensive, obviously. 10.4 inch is kind of like a a5 size sketchbook so it's still quite a comfortable size to work with by the way i just pressed the side button accidentally if i did not turn off the air command that pop-up box will appear like all the time it's incredibly frustrating to have that pop-up box appear but thankfully now it's possible to 
turn that off because in the past you cannot turn off air command so even though there is latency i don't really see latency affect my work i'm still able to get the lines to come out exactly the way i expect them to and i can get the lines to look quite straight so far i've just used a single brush and i'm varying the thickness of the lines with um, my pressure with the pressure that i apply i accidentally pressed the side button again uh, which is why i actually prefer to use the statler norris digital pen because that pen does not have a side button okay let's draw a slow diagonal line here at the top let me just turn off the drafting lines okay let's draw one that's really slow this is about as slow as i would draw normally i can see some slight jitter at the start but after that it's really smooth let's continue the line here yep so this is pretty straight no issues with slow diagonal lines and also you can see the movement with the finger gestures it's quite fluid i can zoom in and out pan and rotate and it's quite fluid let's fill in the shapes with the paint bucket tool let's expand it two times so notice the brightness uh, it changed earlier and that's because my finger was over the camera there is adaptive brightness or auto brightness so if your hand happens to cover the camera the display will actually become dimmer the brightness of this display is i would say above average but it's not as bright compared to other tablets such as the ipad or again the more expensive samsung tablets okay let's um, draw some grills let's have a rectangle here the drawing experience is really good the rubberized s pen tip lights quite nicely on the surface on the glass surface it's not too slippery which is nice and when you tap on the display when you're actually drawing there is no tapping sound because the pen tip is rubberized i don't recommend using a matte screen protector on the display because it's going to wear off the rubber tip really quickly anyway the s pen tip replacements are really affordable just that when you buy s pen tip replacements uh, if you want the rubberized tip make sure it specifies the rubber tip because not all s pen tip replacements are rubberized there is actually a cursor beneath the pen tip but the cursor doesn't show you anything other than a circle so if you choose a textured brush it's not going to show you the textured pattern of that brush it's just going to show you a circle the cursor is always directly beneath the pen tip there is no misalignment and if there is misalignment it's definitely hardware issue and you should go ask samsung for a replacement and because the display is laminated there will not be any issues with parallax okay the main thing here with the s pen that you need to know is it's accurate the cursor will always be directly beneath the pen tip initial activation force can certainly be better so um, here i may actually need to change the brush size slightly so i'm double tapping uh, with two fingers to undo so this is the sketch that i just drew very quickly i probably took an hour to draw and color this i've only used five layers I don't usually use that many layers so I can't tell you what will happen if you use like 30, 50, 100 layers but for my type of art which is just line art and coloring 
flat coloring usually maybe with some textures I don't have any issues when it comes to drawing when it comes to the tablet lagging everything feels very smooth very fast and very fluid and this canvas size is A4 300 dpi so it's quite high res and yeah you can definitely create high resolution artworks with this tablet with the specs that it has this app is concepts and this is actually my favorite app for drawing and for sketching this is my baby girl who is nine months old now i like to use this app because i like the textured brushes and this app works really well and has tilt support as well which is great i always use midiband paint pro to do my line test because that app doesn't do any correction to the line so the line quality you can get is what you have seen earlier and this is um, very fluid as well this by the way is a vector illustration app so you can actually zoom in all the way and it will still retain the detail and the sharpness that's what i really love about this app so these are some sketches that i have drawn of my baby girl who is learning to crawl it's very difficult to draw her because she is always moving <laughs> about so i have to wait for her to be still before i can draw and that's my wife changing her diaper so i was actually holding the tablet like this while i drew all this sketch and as mentioned earlier the weight is really nice so this is a tablet that's very comfortable to use with one hand or two hands there is a huge variety of high quality drawing apps available from the google play store all these are very capable drawing apps so i don't think you will have any issues when it comes to drawing with the availability of the apps and also with the s pen performance the main downside with this tablet for me as an artist and graphic designer is the lack of graphic design apps more specifically apps that can handle layout that can handle text that can adjust text um, that's lacking but if you are just going to be drawing like creating hand-drawn art this is great this is another quick sketch that i drew with concepts so it's just line art and colors all right so to conclude i think this is a good tablet with decent performance given the specifications the samsung s pen performs really well when it comes to drawing and my overall drawing experience on this tablet is very positive the price of this tablet to me is quite reasonable as well the official retail price for the model with 4 gigs of ram and 64 gigs of storage here in singapore is 600 singapore dollars in us it's 349 dollars and since this has been out for several months now chances are you can find this at maybe 10 to 20 percent off which makes it an even better deal and the pen is included so you don't have to spend extra to buy the pen maybe you may want to add a micro sd card slot so that you can get more storage nowadays you can get a 400 gigabyte send this micro sd card for just maybe 50 us dollars this tablet is easy to find at discounted prices so whether it's worth the money well you can decide all right i hope this review is useful see you guys in the next one bye